Good morning, good morning. I think it's morning still. I'm actually not sure. I just uh, met with uh, Phil in uh, Didsbury in uh, Manchester. <sighs> my name is Anya and Shonda Harp is on my back. And this is day 49 of from here to Jerusalem. We're on our way back to the Mercy River. River. Oh yeah, there is a theme in this side of uh, this side of England. Uh, so, yeah, day 49 of a possible 400 days, I'd say, uh, walking from West Cork to Jerusalem with a harp on your back. Uh, yesterday we arrived in Manchester. I think the last day I did an update, it was... Uh, where was it? I hadn't walked with uh, uh, the man who calls himself Shlomo Cohen on Twitter. He came to join me. I had walked two. Uh, <laughs> so I'm in England anyway. It's North England. And uh, we're heading for... Good morning, good morning. <laughs> We're on the Trans-Pennine Trail, um, before the Pennines still. Where was I? Oh yeah, I had like a ditzy morning. I couldn't remember anything. And I was on my way, on my way to... Got a good morning, how are you? I was on my way to, uh, to meet with my friend, Mary Leslie. I spent some time there. I think I'm gonna go onto the street. Like, all this, thank you! <laughs> I was uh, trying to get a, uh, sorry, I know, like I'm really broad. <laughs> uh, I was on my way to, uh, where was I? I remember I did an update along the Mercy somewhere. And I lost my way. That's right. That's right. I was walking to Massey that day. So, Massey. Uh, yeah. And I. What did I do? Massey. Sorry now. Oh my god. Are we going? Yes, we are. Yeah. Grappenhall, that's what it is. I was on my way to Grappenhall, which is where uh, Mary lives with Morris. Now, Mary and Morris, I got to know on the Camino as uh, I'd finally got into the Pyrenees and uh, I was waiting for a new heart bag. And then I ended up walking with them um, to, uh, uh, up to uh, Orison, halfway up the halfway up the mountain, uh, they stayed there, and I walked on, and they had footage of this, and oh my God, like the difference, the difference! I was still that really angry forty-year-old, and now I'm fifty-two, and I'm walking to Jerusalem. So yes, so I'm in England. Um, I was walking to Grappen Hall. I stayed an extra day in Grappen Hall and walked uh, the next day from Grappen Hall to Massey. That's it. I've got it. Okay, so uh, that day I saw... It was really interesting because the, the walk between, um, between Liverpool and Manchester goes, of course, through an awful lot of in industrial... Uh, industrial uh, areas. Uh, one of one of the things is that you come to uh, from Spike Island, you go along the Helens Canal, which is the first industrial canal that was that was uh, dug in uh, that was opened in 1757. I mean, can you imagine 1757? 1757. 
1757. And uh, that day was also my mother's birthday. It was the 17th. Today is the 20th. So three days. Ah, this is why I like doing updates every day. Then I know what I'm doing. Uh, and I wasn't knowing what I was doing that day. Uh, on one side you had the Manchester Canal and on the other side I had the St. Helens Canal there were lots of bees there was a decommissioned ferry banks uh, ferry banks uh, electricity uh, I don't know how you call that uh, where they created ele electricity, uh, which was decommissioned in 2015 because it was still going on coal. I mean, we have similar stuff happening in Ireland as well. Some of them are still going, some of them are not. Uh, but of course, when you think about it, it's a bit weird to create electricity with coal, because coal you could use for heating. Anyway, many odd many odd decisions have been made over time. I really enjoyed the landscape because it is the landscape in which I grew up, you know, this industrial, heavy industrial um, kind of the heavy industrial buildings and then the wildness of the, the greenery that I've seen here in England. I mean, the trees are big, the green is green, it has been pretty, pretty good. Uh, so then I was joined by uh, Shlomo Cohen. That's not his name. Uh, I'm sure he has his reasons. He explained it to me why I'm not, in, like, pseudonyms, fine. I get it. I don't do political commentary. I'm not interested. So, it's what it is. He told me extensively of the period that we were walking together about all his nine Caminos. And, uh, yeah, he wasn't really that interested in anything that I had to say. I don't know what he took away from it. Uh, it was, it's always nice meeting another pilgrim. I just, you know... He was telling me that uh, he thinks he might be autistic. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Um, he's very focused on the whole Camino walking, which is fine as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is fine as well. I'm, I just have my questions about constantly walking to the same destination. And I think what was very clear is that uh, one lesson I had to learn the hard way walking to Rome uh, was humility. And uh, he says he will do one more Camino and uh, then he is going to stop. I would think that he could really do with walking to Rome. That's really all I'll say about it. No, nice man. He did the Camino Angel thing. He came with lunch, uh, packed by his wife. Um, processed bread, processed sandwiches. Oh yes, oh yes. We're in England. He told me about his family. He told me about his wealth, about all the achievements. And here we are listening to people working. <laughs> And, uh, you know, the ambitions are the ambitions of, I don't know, I wish I, I, I wish I didn't get as, uh, you push a few buttons for sure. How are you? Lovely no, I, flowers. <laughs> I, uh, I wish I had more patience for it. And, because I'm sure, you know, I know that we are all on our own journey. But I, I didn't, I found it, I found it hard. I found it hard. Uh, there was a lot of prompting. There was a lot of uh, let me finish talking. And there was no dialogue. 
I think that was the biggest thing. You know, you come and meet another pilgrim, that means that, you know, and I know all pilgrims have their stories, but like, an exchange would be good, a dialogue would be good. Uh, and saying a few times like, oh, I'm sorry for dominating the conversation. You know, I'm a great talker as well. Uh, he had no interest in what, anything that I had to say. Okay, now here, we're back at the, the Mercy. These were the first uh, foxgloves I saw. I saw them yesterday. I finished walking here yesterday to go into uh, Manchester. And I'm going to go a bit further down now because I'm heading for the, the airport. Uh, so I, I still don't know really what the point was of, of us meeting. But I'm sure I'll figure it out, you know. Maybe it was just a test of my patience and I needed it. And he was lucky cause, because I was staying in Grappenhall for a few nights. I was walking with just a harp and nothing else. I didn't have to bring anything else. And I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I brought the harp. Uh, he also had no interest in the harp whatsoever. And like, after all, like I am the pilgrim who walks with the harp. It's important for me to play every day because why else would I carry the darn instrument? Sean, there you go. I know. I love you too. Uh, but, you know, now I know a lot about his life. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I suppose it's all good uh, from my where I was coming from like after trying to ask some questions and trying to have a conversation I just gave up I let him talk um, I let him apologize you know I thanked him very much for what he came to share with me which is only fair enough and then uh, he was asking me, would I go? Hello. Oh, doggo! <laughs> a beautiful doggo. Hey, beautiful. And uh, I thought, yeah, uh, there, was, uh, there was more going on that day. Uh, I hadn't spent any time with Mary yet. And my friend Celia Bartlett was on her way. Um, who walked into Rome with me four years ago and I needed to go spend time with them so I I could honestly say that uh, you know it was time it was time to uh, split ways I think he did call me the next morning but my phone is always off I don't really answer the phone when I'm walking or when I'm spending time with other people you know that's just the way it is I sound really sour about this, I think. I'm not sure. It's not meant in that way. It was just, I was more baffled than anything. Because it's um, all time that we have on journeys like this, all the time that we have with other people is precious. It is truly precious. Look at this, isn't this stunning? The River Mercy. It is flowing. It flows pretty fast, actually. I don't know if you can see it. I saw uh, geese here yesterday as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I went to, it was Celia's birthday as well. It was my mother's birthday. I didn't get to speak to her because uh, I was really scattered uh, that morning. And then in the evening again, and there was so much happening and I was trying to catch up with social media and trying to figure out where the route is taking me. <laughs> uh, so I had a really good night's sleep. It was really, really lovely staying in Grappen Hall with Morris and Mary. Uh, the next day I walked to Massey and played in the, in the, in the barn. There, there's a, a barn where you can sit outside. I had a lovely sandwich there. Did I meet any interesting people? I meet really lovely people all the all the time. 
There was a, yeah, there was a story in Dublin that I wanted to tell you. Guys, when I was standing at the bus stop to go back to the Presentation Sisters on, uh, on the Dublin Keys, this young man caught my eye. And it, it looked like he had been outside for a while. Just like myself. And he looked at me and I said, uh, how are you doing? And he said, uh, you're a pilgrim. And it was like, of course, he knew that I was a pilgrim. That's how it felt. And I said, yes, and you're a musician. And he said, yes. And then I said, where are you going? And he said, I'm on my way to Tara. And I said, oh. He said, where are you going? I'm going to Jerusalem. He goes, oh. I said, what are you going to do in Tara? And he said, intergenerational healing. <sighs> That's what I did on my first pilgrimage. That is what it was all about. Intergenerational healing. And suddenly something happened to me that hasn't happened in a long, long time. I was concerned for him. I'm not often concerned for people because everybody has their road to walk, right? Uh, so I said to him, uh, do you need anything? Do you have a place to stay? And he said, I've been outside for the past few days, but I'm treating myself today. I'm staying in a hostel. I said, that's really good. I said, is there anything else? Do you need food or water or anything? And he said, no, everything is very heavy at the moment. I'm very tired. Uh, and he said, are you okay for everything? I said, yeah, yeah, no, I've got everything that I need. I'll be leaving uh, the city tomorrow. And then my bus was coming and I, I don't know. I said, are you sure you're okay? Like, would you like me to uh, stay with you for a bit longer? And he said, no, why? And I said, because my bus is coming. If you want me to stay, I'll stay. And he said, no, I think this is your bus because I am really tired and I'm gonna go and sleep now. And I said, uh, what is your name? And he said, my name is Joe. I said, my name is Anya. And we, uh, we had a hug. And uh, I wished him well, and then I got on the bus, and he was gone. Oh, and before I got on the bus, he said, thank you for stopping and talking to me, because I was feeling really discombobulated. Great word, right? I was feeling like I, I wasn't here, really, and you helped me come back here, and it's good. Oh, I don't know. Wow, it was just, wow is what it was. And then he went. So it's been feeling a little bit like that. Um, I know that feeling, I know that feeling. Now, from Massey, I went back. I had a short day that day, went back to, uh, to stay with, uh, with Mary and uh, Morris. We made some more photographs. It was nice. It was very nice being with them because at that time when we met, it was only a few hours. That's 12 years ago now. And uh, Mary is a, a great champion of uh, getting more female influence within the Catholic Church. That is really her thing, she is, uh, you know, with Mary McAleese fighting for the rights of women within the Catholic Church. Now, I think uh, that is very admirable. I feel it's, uh, it's definitely, it has its place, women fighting for women's rights in the church. I don't know, we, we talked a lot about whether it is a, whether that is even possible because of course the, ch the Catholic Church would rather have a schism than you know change things 
that uh, they feel have no place within their within their ways with the ordination of, of women within the church there is the argument that uh, there were women priests you know, it's a long time ago but there is precedence so maybe they are onto something I don't know I honestly don't know I have great admiration for anybody who has faith I have great admiration for people who feel that they have something to fight for um, I walk because I have questions more than anything I'm not so sure I know what is right or what isn't right I'm just trying to figure it out I play harp along the way so it's not my place I suppose to uh, to judge uh, or even have an opinion on many many of those things I don't see an objection to female priests I don't see why this would be an issue I also don't feel there is a real objection to wanting to have more people in the church uh, dealing with sacraments if they were married but you know you could argue that I don't know enough about it uh, it depends on whether we believe that it's okay for the church to contract the way it has uh, and it also depends on what we believe that the church is I have no answers there either so those are the things you know while, while staying with Mary I've had uh, she's given me some things to think about again it's always good I think all of that is always good now so then yesterday Morris dropped me off back at Massey and uh, I've been walking along the Trans Pennine Trail towards Manchester and uh, Shlomo Cohen sent me a message saying that it was very dangerous walking into Manchester and I think this is where my objection is I went through this process walking into Dublin the thing is if we have fear like that we have no business being out on the trails that I walk the type of trails that I walk cities don't put fear into me alternate realities do I don't carry weapons I have no need for them I come in peace and uh, I don't attract trouble I just said don't I don't have to um, I sing songs and tell stories and I object to this spreading of fear there is no need to have fear the world is what it is of course you have to be cautious of course you have to pay attention but you should never have any fear because nothing nothing can touch us unless you know it is meant we are on the wrong path and we're doing things that are that I know this is controversial but in my world yeah, things don't happen just like that there are no coincidences there are no coincidences if you put yourself out there in really weird places at the wrong time you, know, you might end up in trouble but during the day walking into a city is not a dangerous place I don't judge people on their backgrounds on their race on their nationality on their religion I don't have to do any of those things don't have the and therefore I don't have to have those fears and as well especially men saying these things to women it is patronizing to an extent that I feel is not really acceptable anymore I'm not gonna pick a fight over it but it uh, it is what it is and uh, I thanked him for his concern and I told him that uh, you know I've walked into many a city uh, some of them considered to be very dangerous and that if I had fear like that I had no business um, being on the road and he took that point so we're all good 
the walk was really lovely. Crossing the M60 was the hardest thing that I did yesterday. And the M60, which is one of the main arteries into Manchester. Wow, scary. There is a tunnel that used to be on the, used to be on the through passage. I'm glad it's not up the cycling route, the National Cycling Route 62 anymore, because it is scary, scary. I went to have a look at it. I, I was glad there was another route. There's a suspension bridge over the M60. <sighs> Again, I had this feeling about, uh, you know, what is the reality? What is reality? And then I ended up across the Mercy again, the River Mercy, and it's been a lovely, lovely walk. I met a, a woman called Amy with her Italian party and their son Cosmos, who's 15 months old, beautiful little boy. And she was telling me that she was having similar experiences about, you know, this reality movement of what is real and the choices that people make. Of course, I still ask the question every day, everybody I meet, do you want to come with me? And so far it's all yes, but, no, but. <laughs> uh, so for now I walk along and it's good. I'm very happy. I made it to Manchester. I would like to go into the city. I stayed with uh, the sister of Ute. Ute I met uh, on my trip to Rome in Salisbury. And she came, uh, she, she came to the evening that my host uh, at the time held, Hilary. Um, she held an evening for, uh, for a few other women, a harp player and Ute was, is an organ player in Salisbury. So I stayed with her sister here. And uh, Manchester feels really nice. It's, it's another one of those really yeah, nice cities, quirky. Um, today, I met in the morning. I met with uh, another Twitter, Twitter follower, Phil. Phil uh, uh, studies, uh, teaches, lectures on. Uh, he's quite young, actually. Lectures on uh, medieval pilgrimages to Jerusalem. And uh, we had a very, very interesting conversation about the route to Jerusalem. He had some really useful information and uh, yeah, we're going to stay in touch for sure. Um, they do a lot of work. Uh, oh, the smell here. It smells of wild garlic. So nice, but I don't see any wild garlic. Oh well, what do I know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm just coming away from there and I'm heading now to meet with Steve and Maureen. Steve is still in Kent somewhere, he's driving up later. How are you? And uh, uh, I believe it is the anniversary of his dad's death this evening, so I'll be staying with his mom. They came to stay with me in West Cork and uh, it'll be a short day for me. So, and I was originally going to go ahead for Stockport, but uh, I think I'm just heading for the airport. I'll just be there uh, to their house and meet with Maureen and hang out with her and make a few more plans, get in touch with people about tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow is Saturday, and then, so I'll do a stock for tomorrow. And depending on, uh, on what happens next, I'll head into the Pennines. I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know, am I missing something? I've really been enjoying the walking. The walking, the Trans Pennine Trail is really nice route to walk. Oh, that smell is just great. Oh, it is. It's all the wild garlic. They caught it. How are you? Yeah.
yeah, and I'm feeling really, uh, feeling really good. Feeling really good, very positive. I think I need to come off here, so I'm gonna cut this off now. I don't know. Fear or so has been a thing, right? In this, uh, in these past few days. Uh, old friends, making new friends, connections. It's good. It's good. So, have another look at the at the Mercy River. There we are. And uh, that is it for me for today. I am the Flatting Harper, together with uh, Sean the Harp. And uh, yeah, tomorrow is another day. Ah, hello there, the Dara Project. How lovely to see you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning stuff, so I'm learning stuff. Manchester, here it is. Um, this is it for me for today. We'll be back again tomorrow, hopefully, or tonight, if I think of uh, all the things I really wanted to say. And uh, yeah, oremus po invicium. Until we let's pray for each other until our roads cross again. And uh, can you hear the traffic? Manchester traffic. There it is. Thank you very much. <laughs>